Welcome to Electro Online. It turns out there are two different ways in which the sources can be hooked up and therefore we have what we call two different configurations. We have the Y configuration and the Delta configuration and it turns out it's not just for the sources it's also for the loads. The loads can be also be hooked up in a Y configuration and a Delta configuration but we'll talk about that later. But here we want to talk about the sources. Notice we have the three sources they all will have the same phase voltage, but they will be at a different phase, 120 degrees apart. Same over here, these three sources will have the same phase voltage, but they'll be 120 degrees apart. Notice when we have a Y configuration, we'll have a neutral. All three will be connected, the coil of all three will connect together, forming a neutral connection. We cannot have a neutral connection when we have a delta configuration. So note, it is not possible, physically not possible, to have a neutral wire on a delta configuration. Now, when they're perfectly balanced, and that's the goal for a three-phase system, is to have everything perfectly balanced so that the phase voltages are exactly the same, only difference is a phase difference and of exactly 120 degrees, then when we add up all the voltages, let's see what happens. Notice we've drawn a phase diagram here for our benefit, and to make things simple, let's call the phase voltage equal to 1. If that's the case, VA will be in phase with the zero position right here, and therefore will have a magnitude of 1 for the real part and a magnitude of 0 of the imaginary part. And therefore, we can see that this then represents at this very moment, the phase voltage for V sub A. Notice that the phasers will rotate like this, so 120 degrees behind, so when we go this direction, that would be a minus 120 degrees, we have our next phase voltage, V sub B. So we'll go from V sub A to V sub B. Notice the magnitude, of course, has to be the same, but it'll be at a different phase. If we then break this one down into the real part and the imaginary part, the real part will be at minus one half and the imaginary part will be at minus square root of three over two. Then if we go to the third phase, we go back another 120 degrees, minus 240 altogether, then notice that V sub C will have a real part of minus one half and an imaginary part of plus square root of three over two. If we now add all three voltages together, notice what happens. We have V sub A plus V sub B plus V sub C. The real part, 1 minus a half minus a half is equal to 0. And the imaginary part, 0 minus the square root of 2 over 2, uh, minus the square root of 3 over 2, and plus the square root of 3 over 2. When you add all together, you get 0 as well. You can see here that the voltages of a balanced three-phase system should always add up to 0. And that's the beauty of a three-phase system when it's perfectly balanced. In order to do that, you have three requirements. First of all, the magnitude of the voltage phases must be the same. V phase must be the same for all three outputs. They have to be exactly 120 degrees apart. And for the system to be balanced when it's connected to load, the load has to be balanced as well. With other words, the impedances of the three loads must be exactly the same as well. And we'll talk about that some more. But if that's the case, we have zero voltage sum of all three voltages combined, and we should have zero current coming back on the neutral in such a way that the neutral can be removed and should not make any, any difference. And therefore, we could have a delta configuration with no neutral connection, and it should be perfectly fine if the system is balanced. And so this is a good introduction to the two different kinds of conf configurations for three-phase systems, the Y configuration and the delta configuration.